from grade school on up, I found out that my work was in demand. For instance, those that were in the 12th grade, 11th grade, when I was only in the 7th grade, would ask the teacher, can they borrow me and do some work for them for the graduation classes, for backdrops and all this. And I was thinking, wow, they really like that. While I was in jail, San Quentin, I first started seeing when I would do artwork from photographs and people would come, inmates would come to my cell and they would call me young blood because I was only about 20. And I, I was amazed and, and you know, they would just line up the inmates and now they bring their photographs of their loved ones, their children, wives, and I would do the rendering photographically, you know, with, with just with the charcoal and the lead pencil. There was one person that told me, you know, you were really good about this. And he had just came in from Soledad Prison. He was transferred to San Quentin where I was doing my time. He had heard about my work. This person said, you know, you've got to do something of your people that are putting their lives up on the line in the struggle and the cause. Who was the man who told you you should do work for the community? None other than the late George Jackson. He was a revolutionary that who was incarcerated and he was inspired by the Panther Party movement and he was involved, but he was in there in prison. And but he was still being educated and he wanted to share this with me. And that was great enlightenment. It opened up my eyes and I said, wow, yeah. I was drawing portraits. But now it would have a meaning to it. Suddenly I was just lit up. I said, that's what I do if I get out alive. Mm -hmm. I said, if I get out alive, I didn't have it three years. Most people were doing many years and didn't want to talk about it, you know, and just too much. Some would never get out. But George himself told me he didn't believe he was going to get out. But he said, Yo, you're crying what you did. You know, you go to the board, they're probably going to release you. But all the time I've been going to the library, studying and reading and being in contact with the movements against oppression. And that right there gave me something positive to, to draw for. When I got out, there were organizations going around. I would go and talk with different representatives, Brotherhood Crusade. It was like a black organization from Watts established that would help fund those in that community. Eventually, I became one of their top artists. I did illustrations, layout pamphlets, flyers, booklets. From that organization, other organizations like CORE, different other black organizations, they would see my work. When I did uh, some artwork of Huey Newton, the people in the community just made me an artist for the Black Panther Party because I was doing artwork of the people, the top people involved in the party. Eventually, I got to meet Emory Douglas. I went to the headquarters in Oakland because I was inspired by the artwork. Emory Douglas is an artist for the party and the party newspaper. And I was just inspired by him because of his art style, plus the fact that he worked the newspaper. He, he knew the, the mechanism of it and how the newspaper would get his images out and his messages out. So mm -hmm. I went to Oakland and we finally met. And he had heard about me and my work. And he was telling me, you the one that got it. You did, you know, this and that. I said, oh no, because you're doing more than just artwork. You were really working with it. In that instant, I started realizing this is the direction that I should be going in. So I dedicated myself to doing more work with different leader of the leadership. Bunchy Carter, he's directly from my community, from Watts. And I, I, what, what I liked about this great warrior, he was restless. And he was tired of all the oppression and, and injustice. He was sincere and he was educated he, and he was for what was good and right. This poster I, I had to do because I, you know, I knew his family personally and Bunch to put his life on the line to be right with all. I did David Helia, um, I did 
he had Eldridge Cleaver, Kathleen Cleaver, just about all the leader heads. One time I was at a park and this man touched me on the shoulder and I turned around. This was George Jackson's father. George Jackson, he was in prison then. That's before he was he said, Do something on my son. Yeah, he came to me and I said, What? He said I said, Yes, sir. So we went out to a dinner and we talked and I mean lunch and I finally came up with something he liked, printed it up. And it helped to raise funds, and I, I, you know, I donated to the parties, different organizations. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was inspired by how they would come to me. I did a picture of Bobby Seale, mm -hmm. and they loved it, so they, the Panther Party put it in their paper. Anything that has to do with prison, incarceration, and I've been through it too, I know how the impact is and how people must feel about this. Nelson Mandela, I like that. Uh, me having gone to prison myself just a little time and it was a, a gigantic time given to him and he endured that. That inspired me. And to come out and, and you know, confront the racism and confront all the madness and, and to try to equalize it, uh, you know, the situation, I, I, I had to do something on him. One thing I found out, Mandela used to box. I wanted people to see he was a fighter before he went to prison. I wanted to have some of the masses. I feel like a person's not famous and known unless you make them so. Our efforts as the masses support the people that represent the masses. So it show collectively that he couldn't do it without you. If it's the masses of Panther Party members with their hands up, it's not necessarily know who that person is, this person. They are masses that make you. I did some work. 1969 of Angela Davis, I was just so drawn to what she was doing and all the energy and effort she put into. And even though I was considered the Black Panther Party artist, I didn't just allow myself just to be stabilized there. I wanted to open up and branch out any organizations. She at the time represented the Che Lamuma Club. That was the time when the world of revolutionaries, especially the black ones, we fought, we were fighting against one another, the NWACP, the US organization, the Panther Party, the core, the different philosophies, different ideologies, but fighting for the same cause and the same struggle. Angela somehow united the energies of all these and the efforts of these different organizations to come together because she was a sister being railroaded. So they put down their philosophy ideologies just to surround themselves with free and Angela. Mm -hmm. And I thought this is a time that they have come together because we know that how the CIA and the FBI had undercover agencies to disperse, to disturb the movements of every level, every kind. And this is what grabbed me and I said, I got to do something on this sister with her natural it was a natural unity for blackness, and, and, and our, our community, as far as the blackness, had to be educated not to destroy one another, but come together. And with that philosophy and ideology, I later learned that this is a much broader fight. I became self-sustaining. Word of mouth and rallies, and it, it started like that. And then eventually, I was called, oh, National Magazines. I was being contacted yeah. to do articles on me. So it just and snowballed. Yes, yeah, snowballed like that. So yeah. these um, Ebony, Sepia, they would go all over the country. And so articles done on me. And even Africa, I was being contacted from students from Africa. I, you know, they read about me. I wasn't trying to get rich, really. That's why I don't have nothing now. <laughs> but wait a minute. To make a little something, I would I start doing entertainers. And that, oh, that amazed me, you know, yeah. Muhammad Ali, he just grabbed my hand. I was at UCLA one time and he was on stage, they were doing a tribute to him and he saw me out there and he said, come on up here. <laughs> and he promoted me right there, you know, he said, I'm the greatest fighter of all and this is the greatest artist of all. And when he held it up, everybody said, I want a post, I want two, I want five, I'm, you know, like that. Yeah. I just fell in love with the charcoal media. There was an artist, great artist before me. Mr. Charles White, 
he inspired me so much. Mm -hmm. The artwork that he did with the charcoal, he made it more than just a sketch, a sketching work. You know, he gave it vitality. Jacob Lawrence, the people that he depicted, the black movement, the migration of black people coming to the industry world from the south to the industries up north. Uh, and he depicted it. Now, they did this with the murals. And what I have done is condensed it with portraits. Charles White was known for the art, the charcoal pencil, I mean the charcoal stick. And I made it the charcoal pencil. Mm -hmm. Someone said it was at UCLA one, I don't know what year this was, Mr. Charles White was speaking and they asked him who was the next upcoming charcoal artist. And he mentioned my name and I feel so proud. I said, wow, a man that I look up to. Can you mention my name? That's great. Yeah, it was inspiring to me. Political art, it guided me. This is what I really needed to do. This is where my soul was. This is where I laid in prison and thought about. And this is what I saw. I saw changes. I saw people who bring their children up to me at the shop. Or around me, I was tell you about mm -hmm. to teach them this art and, and tell them about the struggle, tell them about Huey, tell them what they're doing. I go to schools, if I'm invited, organizations, a group, I'm willing to come and display and show and talk. I think politically, it's more of awareness now. It's the power of the posters. Mm 